Hi, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, September 19th. Some acts of terror over the weekend have an Arkansas satellite. You probably know by now that uh, a Somali man attacked several people in a mall in Minnesota with a knife, was shot by police, then a bomb exploded Saturday night in New York. 38 hours later, a suspect is in custody. Great police work. People are uncer uncertain about safety as always, even with these small acts that didn't leave any, any serious injuries. Into the, into the breach comes Senator Jason Rapert of Conway, a, a familiar anti-Muslim uh, speaker who says that something has to be done. He posted on Facebook that we've got to get the crazies out of the United States, and I can think of a few crazies I might add to Jason's list. But he also said it's time to think seriously about banning the Muslims coming into the United States. His Facebook page was post was removed by Facebook. He's up in arms about it. He's demanded answers as a government official from Facebook. I think Mark Zuckerberg can, can handle the challenge from Jason Raper at the bully of Bigelow. But in any event, one serious note. I think this is going to be a great political discussion. It plays into Donald Trump's hands. Hillary Clinton and the president have given statements about coping with terrorism but acting wisely. I think anybody who thinks that we can guarantee an end of any and all asymmetric attacks by a single person is either deluded or, or dishonest. A single gun or a pressure cooker filled with BBs and, a, and an unhinged person is all it takes to do great damage. I don't think we can ever guarantee that that will never happen. And I should add that some of the worst acts of terrorism and violence in the United States have not been mu done by Muslims, but have been done by others. Let's move along. Dan Ron, the Chancellor of UAMS, has said he's going to retire in the middle of 2017. He planned about an eight-year time. It's a big job and a tough job, and in times of falling money to head the state's premier medical institution. Uh, Intimidator, which is a company in Batesville that makes uh, four by four utility vehicles and mowers, announces it's going to expand its facility and employ 400 more people in the next four years. It's going to get some important government help to get that done. The people backing an amendment that would allow three more casinos in Arkansas filed an interesting legal pleading today. They say the plaintiffs in a lawsuit trying to knock that from the ballot don't have standing. It would appear that the legislature in 2013 in changing the law about initiative measures and challenges to such measures left out the part that just left it open to any tax taxpayer to file a suit to challenge the sufficiency of signatures. That's an interesting new wrinkle for the state Supreme Court to handle. In the philanthropy realm, Rush and Linda Harding of, of Little Rock, who've given a lot of money to a lot of causes, they've given $500,000 more to the Honors College at UCA. Some of it's going to be used to encourage foreign study by UCA students. That's good news. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge makes headlines of the wrong sort in two different areas. Reuters reported today that the, of the 28 states that are suing to stop the president's clean power plan, the, the plan that's to make cleaner air and to reduce emissions from coal-fired power plants, uh, well, a lot of those states are already meeting pollution standards. One of those is Arkansas. Leslie Rutledge said meeting those standards would create an undue burden on power companies. Turns out they're already meeting it. Really, that's not it. They just don't want federal regulation of air emissions, and I don't think we can trust Arkansas to keep clean air if it was left to us. But Leslie Rutledge thinks, thinks otherwise. She also has filed a pleading in the lawsuits by Planned Parenthood against state laws that are aimed at ending abortion in Arkansas by saying, get this, that it would somehow stigmatize women to seek help at, a, at an emergency room if something went wrong with one of the early term miscarriages that pharmaceutical abortions cause. This is utter nonsense. If anybody's stigmatizing women, it's the Republican politicians like Rutledge that are trying to take away a constitutional right, that have tried through their legal action to reveal the identities of women who seek Planned Parenthood help, who try to reveal the identities of doctors who help women obtain a very legal procedure. The stigma is all being done by the people like Leslie Rutledge, and it's an outrage, and, and people should be outraged by it. The University of Arkansas started its big campaign fundraiser we've talked about before Friday night. The goal is $1 billion. We got uh, provided a few pictures of some of the swells that were there at the party. It looked like a pretty nice event at Bud Walton Arena. Nobody uh, that you wouldn't expect to be there when that kind of money is uh, being sought. They say they have pledges for almost a half billion dollars worth of that already. Interesting item on the Arkansas blog this morning, spotted on top of a Manhattan hotel Thursday night at a Luke's uh, rooftop bar was Tom Cotton, the U.S. Senator from Arkansas, meeting with Bill Crystal, Eli Lake, and other neocons. Were they plotting a race for a president in 2020 when they hope perhaps Donald Trump is not the president? 
none of these guys like Trump very much, although Cotton has been very careful about what he's had to say about the great orange man. And finally, a, a serious story, but it, it, it's interesting. In the race for Bentonville School Board this week, Grant Lytle, who's been a diligent and praiseworthy member of that school board, is facing religious right opposition because he had the temerity to vote in favor of a non-discrimination ordinance for Bentonville School District employees. They're sending out scurrilous mailers against them from anonymous sources. They're not being disclosed who's paying for these mailers. They're using President Obama and men and women's restrooms to beat a thoroughly qualified candidate for the Bentonville School Board. If this kind of tactic is allowed to stand, both by the Ethics Commission and also by voters, it's going to be a sad day for Bentonville. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.